Just the other day, I was scrolling through video game price charting and I was looking at some of the more expensive games on the list. I decided to start emulating some of the games that I've never been able to afford and holy crap. So many of these games are absolute garbage. With that, let's look at three rare slash expensive video games that totally suck. Can I ask you all one simple favor? Please guide your mouse to the like button and hit it for me. I would really appreciate it. So have you ever looked at a video game price and thought to yourself, holy moly. Well, this video game literally brings the holy into that phrase. Red Sea Crossing for the Atari 2600 goes for around $13,900 loose. A video game once believed to be a hoax. This game in the past decade has become a literal holy grail to game collectors and Atari fans. Here's Red Sea Crossing. Here we're putting it in the Atari and turning it on. Here's some interesting information I found about Red Sea Crossing. Programmed by Steve Shustak in 1983, the 2600 title was never marketed in video game magazines, instead being targeted solely at religious publications. While Shustak believes only 500 copies were ever manufactured, only a few copies of the game have been seen by the public eye. The game is based off Moses from the Bible, and what do you do? Well, you cross the Red Sea, of course. You walk forward, you jump, and you do so again and again and again. You also carry around a staff that, oddly enough, you never use even once. And that is really it for the game. Even for a 2600 title, this game, Red Sea Crossing, is just so minimalistic and leaves you with nothing. If you want to get the game, as I said before, the game is going for around $14,000, but if you think that's crazy, take note of this. A couple people have actually paid around that price for the game. A game developed by Blue Sky Software exclusively for the Sega 32X in 1996, Spider-Man Web of Fire. This is one of those side-scrolling action platformers that could have been awesome but was done in a way that just felt very short. Sega has some rocking tracks and killer tunes, but there are also some that literally just hurt my ears as well. Sadly, this game is the latter half. The music is so bland and it tries really hard to rock, but I feel like I am in a guitar center just hearing someone try to play some basic chords they just learned from a failed 80s songbook. <laughs> The graphics are decent, but just leave so much to be desired. I don't blame the developers too much here, as many games were trying to execute visuals in this manner during this time. But if you didn't get the graphics just right in a game like this, it just sucks to look at. Kinda like the incredible Holt game on the Sega Genesis. Oh god, it, oh god, oh god, please. <laughs> Oh, 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 that's even worse. Uh, that's even worse. Overall, there are and were so many great beat em ups around this time in 1996, like Streets of Rage, Final Fight, Sonic Blast Man, Golden Axe, and a bunch more. So, why pay $230 for a half decent attempt at a game of this genre? 
I saw a game on the Vectrex for $7,200 called Mr. Boston. So I played the game and then looked up a little bit of history on the game and this was kind of interesting. Let me go into the gameplay just a little first. Another Pac-Man-esque type game where your player moves a top hat through a maze in order to suck up dollar bills that are strewn throughout the screen. After several bills are vacuumed up, the top hat will increase in size. After several size increases, the hat will become full and will not be able to vacuum up any more bills. So the money must be deposited in the vault in the center of the screen before the hat can start gathering up money again. Yeah, pretty basic, nothing too exciting or amazing, but check out the history about this game just a little bit that I found on pricecharting.com. Mr. Boston is a brand of vodka that is still made today. This liquor company customized the game Clean Sweep with their brand logo on the front cover, the insert, and changed the vacuum cleaner into a top hat inside the game. Mr. Boston then gave some of these cartridges away. The exact number isn't known. There are said to be anywhere from three to five copies in existence today, so the game is very rare and highly collectible. And with that giant price tag, the game is fun for like five minutes. This is the type of game I would like to see an arcade somewhere where I stick in a quarter and be done in about five minutes and that's about it. Mr. Boston for $7,200 is definitely, definitely not worth the price at all. What rare or expensive games do you guys know exist that you know sucks? Let me know down in the comments below. Make sure to subscribe and like the video. We are here every pretty much single day of the week doing something here, so subscribe. I promise we'll be here to have fun with you or annoy you. Whatever we do, whatever you're here for, we'll promise to continue doing it. All right, you guys, thanks for watching and have a good day. Thank you, thank you, thank you.